Hello, VOD people. Okay, we're trying a new thing today. We're, um, and I'm, uh, I'm, I changed a bit how I record my uh, screen, or rather my window. So now it should capture the uh, mouse, uh, the cursor too, which is nice, I guess. So we're continuing the work on this equipment manager, um, trying to get wrap my head around this uh, both F sharp and domain modeling, I guess, uh, made functional. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's bring up this and move it out of the way. Let's see, do any local changes? Not, nope, that's good. Okay. Uh, let's try to implement a new workflow. So if I taken any wisdom from my previous uh, attempt uh, or my previous stream, I should have prepared in uh, advance which workflow to work on, which I did not. So that's as per usual. <clears throat> I tried to make these things a bit impromptu, so that I actually end up doing them because if I plan too much, I just end up never doing them. I feel it feels like they're too much effort. So let's have a look. What do we got? Register equipment and rent equipment. Right. So for this equipment, oh no 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 moving no moving about. For this equipment manager, we're gonna um, we're gonna need to add. Um, another workflow. So we're able to register equipment at this point. We're able to rent equipment. Oh. And hmm, what else should we, we, we be doing here? Um, let's see, I'm actually gonna, should I move this somewhere else? I think I should. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna, uh, hold on a second. I'm just going to do this. Ha <laughs> Yep. Just making sure that it doesn't record something it shouldn't. I should probably put like something in the back here. Uh, can I? No, I can't do that. <laughs> that changes everything. Let's just uh, like do like this. Yep. And we're back. There we go. Or I, I was able to hear. Uh, it's just the screen that went away for a bit. Okay, let's see. Moving on. Another workflow for the equipment manager should be, you're going to register, you can rent it. Uh, should it be something for like returning it maybe? Nah. Hmm. There probably should be some kind of way to, um, <laughs> I really should have planned this better. Um, what to do? Uh, maybe, oh, it looks like the stream is dropping out again. That's good. Okay. You know what? It really looks like the the web connection here is really poor, which is very strange, but there you are. Hmm. Well, anyways, the recording on YouTube will work. Uh, yeah. Thank you, OBS. Oh, I didn't think of that. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> once again, let's... Um, yeah, let's do this. Uh, yep, that one. Uh, until tomorrow. There we go. Turn off notifications. Until tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So we've got everything working here. Um, wow, this connection is really poor. Is it Twitch? No, it can't be. It has to be my web, my internet connection at home. Let's see, register equipment, rent equipment. 
uh, it should be returned automatically, I guess. Um, is there like, maybe there should be something to update the equipment maybe? That should be a separate workflow. It's a bit like the register one, but you know, it is different. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that one. That's, <laughs> I was about to say, that's probably easy. That's not very clever, to, uh, smart to say, right before starting work. Let's see, let's move this over here. Just doing some window management. Here we go. Okay, uh, let's do this below here. Oh, come on. Come on, writer. Why are you being so slow? Apparently nothing's happening. Okay, let's do this then. Ah, here we go. An F sharp file. Yes, it should be a source file. Uh, let's do update. Yeah. Oh, that word equipment. Dot. Public types. Yeah. Let's just do uh, like this. Got the public types. Oh, right. Uh, it wants me to do some of this. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, how do we do it over here? We made this a namespace. I haven't really been uh, reading the book since the last stream, so. The part where I mentioned that I should probably re read up on why we are using namespaces and why we're using modules. Did not do that. Man, uh, man, management. Management, yeah. Uh, update equipment. Let's just do all the files straight up uh, at once. Update equipment. Ooh, <laughs> made it on the first try. Internal types.fs. Yes. Wait, wait. Uh, the internal types we do indeed put in a module internal. Same with the namespace and then in dot internal types. Okay. Let's do that. Module. Let's erase all this. Module internal equipment manager dot update equipment dot internal types types. Yep. Did I do? Yeah, update equipment. Right. And then for the last one. Uh, update equipment implementation.fs. There you go. And the implementation is also module internal, I believe. Let's have a look at this one. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, yeah. Internal equipment manager dot update equipment dot implementation. Yay. So public types, we've got a type like this, uh, rather actually it looks like F sharp. Oh, right, we need to give it a name. Um, unvalidated something. Update request? Yeah, that makes seems. Hmm. Unvalidated equipment update. That's pretty, uh, pretty uh, explanatory. It says, it says what it does right on the tin, <laughs> which is what you should do. Don't make it more obtuse than necessary, which kind of hints that it should be a, some some level of obtuse, but it shouldn't, I don't think. 
uh, uh. <laughs> anyway, uh, right, uh, we gonna, we're going to need an equipment ID. Equipment ID uh, of the type uh, GUID, I believe. And we're going to need to be able to update this. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look at the public. Oh, sorry. Right. Of this. We've got name, details, rate. Right, start date and rate date. Uh, this should probably be mostly the same as this, actually. So maybe we should just do the simple thing, which is copy this. And we'll paste it in here. We'll remove this one and this one. And do this and voila. It's nicely formatted and all. Okay, so that's the equipment update. And these should all be option because they you don't have to specify them. Option, option, and option, like so. So they're, uh, these are all, of course, optional, while the equipment ID must be specified. That makes sense. Uh, Should we return the updated equipment? Yes. Yeah, yes, we need to return an event of some kind. Type equipment. No, no, no. Equipment <laughs> updated, which is also a type. Uh, which should probably just return like the updated equipment. Um, yeah. So actually, we're just going to do the dirty thing. And the old souls, which um, does the same thing. And instead of registered, it's just going to say, oh, uh, nope, it's not, it's going to say, yeah, 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 uh, updated. We go. We need to import, we need to include these. These are part of the common types. Import missing references and file. Yeah. So these are all the same. That's good. Okay. Um. That takes care of those. Uh, we will also need to return a validation error of some kind. Validation error. Uh, which is a validation error of string. Um, <clears throat> and I think we're just going to define this at once. So update equipment error, which at the moment can only be a validation error. Yes. So, but later we may um, expand this by more or different uh, or more error types. And then at the bottom, we got a final type, which is update equipment, equipment, which is named the workflow. And it's going to take a It's going to be a function that takes an unvalidated equipment. Nope. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> validated equipment update. And it's going to return a result, which is either a equipment update, equipment updated, or and they update equipment whew, equipment error. Like so. The, so that's the public interface that we need to implement. All right. 
Uh, we're going to need some internal types, but I think that those are going to come along as we uh, as we uh, get this rolling. So let's just have a quick look at how we did this before. So yeah, we start with, uh, let's see in here. Uh, we start by with the invalidate request. We validate the print request. Uh, we we validate. Uh, why could do I call? Why why did I call it a verified when it's a validated one? Hmm. That's just confusing naming. Get equipment duration limit. Yeah, Con uh, pass it in to confirm confirm rent period. Yep, and if it does that. And yeah, okay. And then we do create events. All right, so the first step is always we need to validate this input. So we go into implementation and we just yoink this at once because this is very helpful. That's not what I want to do. This is what I want to do. There we go. Yep. Uh, and this should be the this one. Uh, yeah. Let validate uh, equi -wi 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 equipment update. So this will return an internal type. So this should be of a type uh, validate equipment update which takes a an unvalidated uh, equipment update like this, and it returns, uh, how did I define the, uh, oh, do, do, do. let's have a look at this one just rather quickly. Yeah, it takes in a few dependencies, then the unvalidated, yeah, and results, which is either a validated one or an validation error, right. So there's going to be a validated equipment update, which is going to be uh, rather like the, uh, let's see, uh, public types. Should be rather like this one. We're going to do the proper thing and copy this like so. And this one should be an equipment ID from here. Uh, this should be a string 200, I think. Yeah. This should be a string 1000. This should be a rate. This should be a rate start day, I think. Yeah, there we go. And this should be a rent duration limit. All these are, of course, still optional, except for the equipment ID, because of the same reasons as before. Um, next up, we're gonna say that we're gonna return a result, which is either, uh, it takes an, uh, yeah, it's a validated, uh, validated equipment update or a validation error of this kind. Yep. This is either gonna be one of those. Yeah, that makes sense. And we're gonna go over to the implementation, not that one, but this one. And we're gonna say that this is the type validate equipment update. Yeah. And that's gonna be a function. It takes a uh, unvalidated equipment update and return something else. And the first thing we actually need to do here is validate the equipment ID. So that should probably be the first thing that we do. Uh,
so we're gonna do unvalidated equipment update. We're gonna pass that. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. All oh, right, I remap this. <laughs> um, I remapped two of my keys on my keyboard, so we're gonna see how that turns out because I don't, I don't necessarily use those the two keys that I switched uh, switched. I don't or swapped rather. I don't use them that often, but um, I do use them when I write F sharp. So let's see how that, that works out. We're gonna need a function called validate equipment ID, where we pass in the um, equipment ID of this equipment ID, and we're gonna need to validate equip equipment ID. That's gonna be one of these. That means we're gonna need to update this function signature. Uh, right here with a validate equipment ID, and that's also going to need to be a type. So let's create that one validate equip. Uh, uh, wow, equipment ID. Um, I'm not nothing if not consistent. Let's see, let's put these on separate lines like so, just because that makes it a bit nicer to read. Validate equipment ID. It takes a, should it, hmm, should we validate it before we try to create an equipment ID of it? Let me think. We should probably. Hmm. We should probably have a separate type, which. Uh, which. which makes a difference between a validated equipment ID and just a straight equipment ID, I guess. I'm kind of debating, should we make sure that it's a, a valid format for a equipment ID first? Or should we check whether it's in the database first? We should probably make it an equipment ID first, actually. Yeah, so this takes an equipment ID and it returns Bool, I think. Yeah, it will probably be that simple. Nothing fancy. So this is an equipment ID. It's a GUID. So we should probably, oh, there we go again. Try to generate one. So let's try to do equipment, equipment ID. Yes, that one, I think. Yeah, we're not gonna use that one. That's not right. Um, update. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, did I just do this? Oh man, I did all this in the wrong file and you didn't tell me. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I put this then? Here? Yeah, okay. Why is this not? Okay, whatever. Uh, uh, let's see. We'll just type it on once more. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay. Implemented internal types. Yep, 
that's the one. Uh, validate. Uh, mm, should it be validate or should it be something else? Uh, confirm equipment ID. Nah, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do validate, validate. And that has to do, still have a type, validate equipment ID. Takes an equipment ID, still returns a bool. We go back to the implementation of the update equipment. Yep, yep, and this should now use create, which takes a string, okay, and returns an, an equipment ID or a string. Right. I'm not really sure what I, why I made this a string input when I never use it as such. Uh, so sure, let's just uh, string like this. That should fix that. Why is it complaining? Too many arguments. This, this function takes too many arguments or is used in a context where function is not expected. Right, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because we need to do this. Uh, um, Sure, uh, we'll, we'll get back to it. Uh, yep, that creates a, an equipment ID. The, this validates it. Uh, this should probably have like a map error. Uh, Results.map error. Oop, error. Uh, which just takes a validation error of the this variant. Yep. So that should convert that, I think. Uh, yeah, that should work uh, because it, that's it's of string, right? Oh, that, that doesn't work. Apparently, public types and it says the validation error is the validation error string. Yeah. Uh, good, good. And if this evaluates to true. Uh, we should probably um, that means it's present and it should be fine. So hmm. How do we put this? Yeah, so if we have another function which we'll call value if okay, which takes hmm. Um. Hmm. No, it wraps the functions. Yeah. So. <clears throat> uh. Oh, what's it? What the, I'm not really sure what they are called. So we'll just match F. F value with um, 
if f value, then uh, we'll just return an OK with value. Uh, if not, well, oh, uh, isn't it else? I think so. Else, yeah. We'll return an error of nothing. Not rather, we should actually error message, like so. It should be like this. What's the result of this? It claims that it takes a a to bool, then the A, then it returns a result, yeah. Not really sure if we should... Yeah, we need to pass in the uh, value. Hmm, it feels kind of dirty, but sure. Let's try this and see if that makes sense. Um, so let's do value if okay, then we pass in this, which is a function, and then, oh, right, these need to be swapped. Uh, let's see, like this, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Then we do an error message, uh, invalid equipment ID. And once again, we result dot map the error, Ooh, error to a validation error, like so. And if that all works out, um, we end up with an option here. Uh, yeah. No, well, what do we do? No, not value if okay. Value if true is the right name for this. So this should also be true. So if this returns true, return the value, which... Well, actually, this would be better named as... Uh, Okay, if true, I guess. Like so. Well, I used a reformatting tool thingy, but it didn't really do anything for me. So let's do this. Okay, if true. And if it's okay, blah, blah, blah. And then we do fail if invalid. To unwrap that, then let's store that in a variable equipment ID like so and I think we'll even uh, do like one of these and do this and then take all these and indent them like this and that solves that so that was just the equipment ID <laughs> let's move right along to the next thing which is the Let's see, what do we receive here? A name. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. Let name be something else. Unvalidated equipment update dot name. With an uppercase N, actually. Oh, there we go again. Remapping those buttons. Um, do we need to do anything? Nope, we just do like a string 200.create. We uh, pass in a string and we'll try to get something in turn. Then after that, we just fail if invalid. 
And that's all we have to do for name. Yeah, these are a bit easier. Let, uh, what's the next one? Details, details, B, unvalidated, minute details. Let's, oops, let's try to do a string 1000 for that one. Create, and then we'll just fail if uh, invalid. Okay, next one up is details. No, 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 <laughs> is rate. Uh, let's just try to do like this and this and say rate. 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 Next one up is rate start day. Start day. Start day. Start day. What do you see? Rent duration limit. Okay. Rent duration limit. Um, rent duration limit. Rent duration limit, like so. And then for my last thing of a jig. Let validated equipment update of type validated equipment update B drum roll. I'm able to nope. I, th I hope that we'll probably be able to just um, uh, generate all the fields since it should probably know the type, but it, that wasn't a, an option apparently. Equipment ID is equipment ID. Nope, 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 nope. nope. That does not help at all. Equipment. Right, these should also be, okay, let's see. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, right, we didn't handle if there were options or not. Wow, we forgot an <laughs> entire thing to do. Right, okay, let's just do one thing at a time. Uh, we'll do this, and this, and this. Equipment. Equipment ID, uh, name, details, rate, rate start day, and rent duration limit. And we'll close that off like so. And if we get to this point, we basically just return an OK with the validated Equipment update, uh, like so. It should be the same oh, as this one, yes. Okay, what's it complaining? This function takes too many arguments, or is used in a context something, something, something. Validate the noob. Uh, oh, right, uh, this should be one of these. Yeah, that makes it a lot better. Okay. This is wrong because field, uh, right, this should be low, oops, uh, right, button switched around. This should be lowercase. 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 This should be lowercase, and we're in it, yep. Okay, so over here, what's this? Type mismatch, expecting a result. Okay, so it, but was given a valid date equipment ID. Yeah, that is, that is quite right. 
this needs to be put inside a result dot bind like so. But now this becomes a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this uh, equipment ID. Uh, well, first of all, we need to make this fun. Then we're going to make this an arrow and then close it inside of this. Uh, and we're going to pass that in manually like so. And this is complaining because Lambda can be simplified, right? Uh, what's this complaining about? Expecting a blah, blah, blah. But was giving a blah, blah, blah. The type validation error does not match the type string. Right, this is probably the same stuff that we're seeing here. So let's try to do this. Then add a space, paste that in here. Yeah, that cleans that right up. Let's clean this file up. Okay, yeah, that looks a bit better. Still a bit clunky, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I'll claim, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should just, oh. you know what? We're actually going to just split this up. Uh, we're going to take these three lines right here, go over here. Uh, let's just paste them first. And then we're going to move them over a bit like so. We're going to go here and we're going to say let um validate equipment equipment id be this this is going to be an equal sign this is going to be removed like so and in here we're going to do validate uh date equipment id like so yeah I love this shadowing. I love this. We're, we're able to just take this 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 name and just reassign it to something completely different. And of course, the type system just figures out where all of it should go. So down here, it still looks like that data equipment, but actually we're doing a bit of a complex, but we're doing something more than just like a simple function call. We're wrapping it and everything. It's, it's cool. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to redo this where I move this up one step. So right here, there should be like one of these and this should be equipment ID like so. Does that make it more? Yeah, I kind of like it better. Yeah, kind of follows the trend. Right. Uh, so that validates that. And these are a bit interesting because these are options. So we should only... Name should end up as an option. So it should be wrapped, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. Ooh, I I say that with such... <laughs> so what are we actually trying to return here? It, we should end up with an option, right? But we need to validate first. So what we should be at this stage, we should, or rather at this stage, we should have a result of string 200 option and a validation error. Um, shouldn't these be mapped? Yeah, they should. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's map these. Um, like so, 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 so. No, wait a second. 
Do these? Oh, that's maybe because they are, yep. Yeah. That might be part of the error. That's showing, okay. Right, okay. So that uh, makes these, uh, expecting a string option to A, but was giving a string to our result of, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I, I think these are a bit backwards. But 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 that's I, I I guess that's because of how the type inference works. So it says expecting a string option to a tick to to, to tick a, which in my mind means that this slot should be a string option, uh, or rather, Uh, how should I put this? Okay, so so string option to tick a means that this is the type that we're sending uh, that we're uh, we have at this stage. So we should have something that matches that. But that's not what we're <laughs> that's not what we're uh, what we're giving it. We're we're giving it a string to re to result of string two hundred and string, which is not what it was expecting. So the the second type signature is what string two hundred create is. But in my mind, it would, it, <laughs> it, it, when it says expecting a blah, 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 I would expect it to say, well, I, I expected, uh, string 200 expects uh, a, uh, a string. So that's what it should be expect. Uh, so that's what, I, but this message is not from string 200. It's from the compiler saying, I don't expect something like string 200 right here. I'm expecting this instead instead of the string 200 signature, which is reverse of what I, what my head does. Oh, <laughs> hi drives. Didn't see it until now. Did you message, message this uh, or send this a long time ago? Huh, it doesn't have timestamps. Can I turn that on? Let's see. Hmm. Okay, uh-huh. Uh -huh. mm. oh, doesn't appear like it. Uh, chat appearance. Okay. Oh, it can be a bit larger. Ooh, that's nice. Timestamp. Here we go. I was some time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Some time ago, Jarvis writes, just as I say it. Oh. Are you saying you would like got X, but it was expecting Y? Um... I'm not necessarily saying that I would like it to be different. I just expect it to be different because that's the way my brain thinks. But that's because I'm used to um, other programming languages where error messages are more like that, I guess. So I, I think that the my thinking here is I want to use the string 200 um, function right here but the compiler is working its way down line by line it it, it appears or at least that's what how i ima uh, not imagine it but how i make it make it make sense in my head where the compiler starts <clears throat> at the top and goes well this is a string option which means that this thing should be something that takes a string option and returns something else which is what the error message actually says where it says expecting a string option to something else. So the compiler is just working its way down and trying to figure out the next thing should be something like this. And that's what it is. And that's what it's saying. It's expecting a string option to something else. But it was what it was actually given was something that takes a string and returns a result of something. So that's wrong. So it says the type string option does not match the type string. 
which is again true, but th this is the opposite way of how I'm thinking because what, what I'm thinking is, well, I'm going to use string 200 create regardless. So, and in my head, the error message would then say, well, string 200.create expects a string. So I would, <laughs> my, my mind would, would thinks that it should say, well, if it, it was expecting a string, but it received a string option, but that's not how the compiler thinks mostly because it has to, it has to reason about the types in some way. And the way it does it is going line by line, I, I guess. It, it looks like it at least. So it's just me, when reading these error messages, I just have to think of, think how the compiler thinks. Where it, it the compiler has a value, and then the next thing it, it um, um, expects is something to, which accepts that value in, uh, in some way. Uh, so it's it's just I have to remap how how my brain uh, reads the error messages and and kind of align my my thought processes I guess with how the compiler thinks, which will make reading error messages easier because then I know why oh just silly thing uh, why 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 I get the error messages that I get. I, I don't think I actually realized this until this very moment, <laughs> which uh, which makes uh, which explains why I've had some uh, so much trouble reading the error messages because I'm I'm thinking of it completely in the exactly the opposite way that I should I guess. But okay, so we got the string option here, and what we actually want to produce is. A result of string no 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 yeah yeah a, re a result of string two hundred option or validation error yes this should be this actually needs to be part of this basically. And this whole thing should only run if the string option has a value, if it's sum, basically. So, <laughs> only uh, return and... Uh, <laughs> Okay, let's try. Let's try to do the the. Let's try one thing first, which is, if. Uh, let's just do this. So if name is something. Match name with. Uh, so if name. Is sum. Um, can I just do like sum n? Then we should probably run this thing with jig, right? And if it's not that, if it's none, then we'll return none. Uh, oh, right. This should probably be inside of a, oh, of a sum. Right. Uh, oh, right. Um, just a quick bio break for me. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, like this and.
And we're back. Let's see. This line goes away. And this, oh. This line is complaining. And we're expecting result. Oh no, we're wrapping it the wrong way. That's right. Because now it's a result option. And that's not what we want. Um. <laughs> right. So if name is... If name is sum... We, uh, if, if that is, uh, if his name is, is none, we actually still want to return an okay with wrapping a none. Wow. This is really bizarre. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll do this, which should make it, ob oh, nope. It does not make anything obvious. Oh, right, right, right. It does match the branches. That's <laughs> This should work because this is just complaining. The type doesn't match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> this, however, says uh, this should, however, turn. Uh, This should actually be a result dot map sum, right? Yes. Yeah, it fixes the error down here. Okay. Let's see if it can make sense of this, which is maybe the most important part. If name is sum, right, so we, we receive name, we match it, and if it's sum, we take the name, we try to create a string to 100, up, uh, from, uh, uh, a string to 100, we map the error, as we always do, and actually, I want to swap these. Yes, that makes more sense in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it were if it succeeds, we map it to a sum. Uh, so we take the inner value of the result and wrap it in a sum. Yeah. So we get a string to hundred option. If it fails, we map the <clears throat> string error string to a validation error, right? And if it's none, we just return the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This actually makes sense. Um, so this is of course very generic. So we'll make this a separate function, which oop, boop, 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 which is the next thing that we'll do, like this. And we'll just put this right here, and we'll call it a let. Yes, what do we call it? Uh, uh, Try, try validate, maybe validate, optionally validate, validate option, validate option. Yes, I think that's the word I want to use, uh, yeah. And this is going to be the validate function. And then we're gonna take the value. And we're gonna paste, gonna remove that line. Uh, this is already covered. 
So this should all be indented one less level. This should be value. And we'll call this, um, yeah, we'll just oop, call this V instead. This should be validate function. Uh, yep. I feel like there's like a uh, like a way to do the like the value, and then you do like an option. Map. And then you basically do this. But uh, are you are, are you able to Is there Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I, I think there's a way to do like an option map or binder something, but this, this works. Yeah, this, this, this works just fine. So we'll just leave like this. Um, I'm very, <clears throat> This is really cool where, uh, as you can see, it's trying to do uh, the compiler is is creating the types dynamically, right? So it says, well, V is some kind of generic TK, which is, is it true because uh, it, it's not defined here what what um, value, what kind of type value is, which is good. So this is generic. It says validate function. Once again, not really clear what this is. But it does know that returns a result of some kind. Uh, I think if I do this, yeah, right? So this says it takes a tick A and returns a result of tick B and a string. What, how does it know that? Well, well because <clears throat> on the next line, we do a result map and put it into some kind of, uh, put it into a sum. So now it makes it, that makes it a B tick option. A tick B option and a string because this says that it takes the, because this takes a string, then the error must be a string for this to match up, <laughs> which makes it make sense. Uh, have you seen Scott's railway oriented programming in F sharp? Yeah, um, this project is um, I'm using Scott Lashin's book, uh, Domain Modeling Made Functional. Yes. Um, I think <laughs> I think that's the name of the book. Let's see. Uh, uh, it's probably domain modeling made functional. Yes, tackle software complexity with domain driven design and F sharp. So yeah, uh, I've I've seen this talk too. I've um, seen um, a few few of a few of his talks. They do of course overlap some, and his railway oriented programming also comes up in his book. Um, so yeah, this is basically his take on domain modeling using F sharp. So I'm kind of teaching myself both F sharp and domain modeling at the same time, which is a choice, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really, I, I read this book last year and I really, really like the concept uh, or other the, the, uh, oh, what's it called? A concept, but um, uh, not doctrine, but um, yeah. Well, like I really liked the the thinking, I guess, in the book, and I've always wanted to try to get into F sharp and functional programming in general. 
and this book just seemed like uh, like an interesting way and i know scott lashin is um known for writing pretty good tutorials on f sharp and um yeah it really just turned me on to domain modeling in a, in a big way uh it looks like a really nice way to design software and especially when using f sharp so i read it last year i read all the way through it didn't write any code which was a mistake uh picked up the book again this year or rather i just started writing code and i also have the uh sample code from the book um just off screen from what you can see and i, I i've used that as reference when implementing code in earlier streams but um I haven't really used it this time. Uh, just my my own code from previous streams, streams, and kind of compare the two and see how to get everything working. But yeah, um, I've, I've seen this talk about about worldwide oriented programming, and um, yeah, it's good. It's a good analogy. Uh, the only thing is, I I was kind of on board with the whole concept before I saw his analogy and. I, I, I think I think it worked worked pretty well. He got me confused when he were talking. He was talking about uh, multiple functions that have multiple outputs when you just want the single input. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> that got me confused, um, and it took me actually a little while to understand what he me what he actually meant was. Uh, what's known as the bind function on result and option, um, which I uh, know as um, a flat map or select many in other uh, like functional programming paradigm implementations like reactive extensions or um, collection functions. So that got me confused a bit, but um, yeah, if, if you're not familiar with with how this these things work, I think it's a pretty good analogy. It seems to work for him. So, and he 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 would know better than me. Uh, validate option. Uh, we we also need to prov <laughs> prov provide a function to validate with. Yay, it worked. That's cool. The question becomes, should it just return? Should we do the validation error conversion here? Or should we do it outside here? Does that make more sense? I don't think so, but it kind of... It kind of follows the... Like... Um, You know what? We're going to move it outside. Yeah. We're going to move it here. That kind of follows the convention that we've established out elsewhere. I think that looks a bit nicer. Yeah. So all we actually need to do with these... Yeah. is just introduce... Uh, let's see. If we do this, we can select all these. Yep. That's the ones. And validate. That. Val validate option like so easy peasy lemon squeezy right so you sort of wrote wrote a switch function yeah um the match match feature or the match feature sure is basically just a switch function on steroids where it supports pattern matching um stuff like c sharp has this uh pretty really they introduced in c sharp pretty recently and i know a lot of other other programming languages also introduce this switches sw switch functions with <clears throat> support for pattern matching so instead of just um defining a, a case where you have a like a like a primitive value that it needs to match this thing you basically give it a like a pattern something to look like so value might be a sum with a value or a none, which is no, no value. And that's what I'm expressing here. So if it's a sum, uh, take that value and assign it to the variable V. And if it's a none, do this instead. 
or rather this inside. Right, so that's the validate function all done. Uh, the next part will be to, so after we've validated, we should probably get the, uh, should probably get the um, equipment from the database, change it and return the updated <coughs> oh, my throat is in, oh wait a second got some water right here oh my throat was bone dry oh that actually happened a lot oh I don't know why I did that. Why I didn't do that earlier? Uh, let's see. So the next thing would be to load the equipment from the database, then update, and then create the event. All right. So the next thing is let's do an internal type. Um, <laughs> load equipment load it takes an equip uh, no, no 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 that's not how you write it takes an equipment ID and it returns who interesting what does it return just equipment is there like a, there is a type called equipment. Most of the programming streams are there now. Oh, also just FYI, you can move to software dev and game programming instead of side tech these days. Oh, really? Let's have a look. There was, uh, I honestly didn't check if there was uh, software. Oh, look at that. Last time I checked, this wasn't an option. It's a menu. Okay, yeah. Cool. Well, that fits a lot better. So, sure, thanks. Uh, let's see. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, well. <coughs> 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 oh. Um, yes, right. Uh, this should not go here. It should go here. Because we're going to have another type, which is... Uh, update. Equipment. I think. It takes a load equipment and a validated equipment update and it returns it basically returns the updated mm -hmm. it actually returns the the updated equipment Updated equipment. Yeah. 
Um, the shoe can probably fail in some way. We'll get there. So the it's basically gonna look like this. It's just gonna it's just that it's gonna be update up updated. Updated, yeah. Uh, and it's not gonna have this at the end, like so. Yeah. So that's the next thing that we're gonna implement down here. Let update equipment. Uh, well, we should probably call it something else because that was what we're calling this type. Um, maybe we should call it like something like merge equipment details. Uh, partially update. Optionally update. Optionally update. Ugh, naming things. Optionally. Oh, I'm not too happy with that word, uh, that name, but sure. Optionally update equipment. Optionally update equipment. Which, uh, oh yeah, right. We're supposed to do a like a f um, optional oh, nolly update equipment. It's a function that takes a load equipment and a validated equipment and the first thing that we need to do is load the equipment so let existing equipment let's uh, do, uh, do, do, do validated equipment Update. Dot equipment ID. Right, and then we need to do equipment ID dot value to get the value of that one. Then we're going to pass that in to load equipment. No, we're actually going to use the, the equipment ID directly. That's something that we did. And this is going to be lowercase like so. This is gonna, this, 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 actually, should this be able to fail? No, we don't expect it to. I think it, maybe it should do that, but we're not gonna let it for now. We'll change that later if we want to. And that's going to leave us with the equipment, yeah. So that's the ex existing equipment. Now comes the interesting part where I'm a bit uncertain on how to do this the proper F sharp way, which we're basically taking some shortcuts with already, especially with this fail with uh, fail if invalid function, which is not how we want to do it. But uh, in the book. Um, Scott Lashin uses a uh, a computation expression to unwrap results, and we're not quite there yet. It's one of the things that I should uh, I said I should read up on and did not do. So here we are. 
So we've got the existing equipment. Now we basically want to go through all the fields in the optionally, the validated equipment update and update if it's sum. So that's basically a match. Hmm. On every single one. I'm just thinking if there is any better way to do it, but I can't think of any. Do we just do like a whole lot of matches down? Yeah, I can't think of any other way to do it, basically. Okay, let's try two different syntaxes and see what we like. So the first one is just like a simple match. It's like that match, uh, validated equipment, uh, update dot uh, name, for example, with, and uh, either it's a sum of name, and we just do like, uh, Ooh, right, 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 right. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, no, you know what? I think I know. Updated equipment. I think what we're going to do like this. Uh, and you say low, do, 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 existing, existing equipment with this is what you want to do is it name should be i think this is the syntax i I'll probably have to look up the syntax for this either be so so uh, you'll do like validated equipment update thingy jig and you'll do option Um, like or yes or else returns option if it's sum otherwise return if none this is oh no 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 oh man returns option if it's sum otherwise it values if none thunk and returns the result right that's not what does for all do? oh yeah, yeah I know what that says or else Existing equipment dot name. Now, how do we like that? I think that's the better alternative. Because the, the alternative would be to do like a match for every single field. Like we had a match, uh, validated equipment update dot name. <clears throat> We match that with some name, and if it's some, we do um, uh, existing equipment dot name equals name, and if it's none, we do nothing. So we do one of these for all, uh, for for every <coughs> for every property, which feels very verbose. The alternative would be where we basically define like a function. So let like um uh or rather uh no yeah 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 uh, let's the um. Yeah, we, we basically parameterize this, so uh, you do let update and you say you, you need to provide a value or an update function and a value basically. 
and you say, well, this is the value. This could just be a V, uh, this could be a V. And then you pass, say up uh, V and you pass that to the update function. Or else you do nothing. And then you do for every, uh, for every um, property, you do validated, validated, that one, name, and you pass that to up, uh, let's do this instead. And you pass that to update, and you provide a function which takes the value and then do like uh, existing equipment dot name equals V. Uh, and you do that for every property in set, which is one line shorter, or you do this, which is what I think I'll actually prefer. So <laughs> this is basically three lines for every property. This is two lines for every property plus a function. But this is one line for every property. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, um, I also just remembered that this is not how you do. <clears throat> this is not how you do it. Um, this will just do a comparison. So this this returns a bool. Because th th this, a single equal sign means compare something. If you want to assign something like you do in other, like in object oriented program, uh, program, programming languages like C Sharp or Java, or uh, most of them, you do, you do this. That's an assignment that says put the variable name instead of this property. But this will also fail because this thing is not mutable. So that creates a whole other problem where you have to define it as mutable. And that's basically how F sharp is supposed to work. So what you're supposed to do is instead, uh, you should probably, <laughs> instead you should probably do like let existing equipment, once again, Put that over here. Okay, put it here. And if you don't update anything, you just return it like so. But if you want to uh, update it, you do like this. And you say with name set to name, like so. Now this will give you the right one. So you reassign existing equipment over and over again with just the one change for every step. All right, so if it's some, um, updated if not just set it to the same thing that it was uh, which means <clears throat> we you but basically have to do the same thing over here uh, where you do like a let existing equipment equals like this and you do this and in here you do instead you do this instead uh, like so. Right, so if this is set update according to this. Um, but once again, I actually prefer this, which is, I, I think I prefer this. Yeah, I do, yeah, I do. Anyway, uh, interesting thought experiment. Uh, let's do this. Yep. And let's do this for the other fields too. Uh, name. Uh, no, we did name. <laughs> Details. Actually, we're just gonna do this and this. 
and we forgot to put the S at the end. Do that again, details, but this time it is rate. Then it is rate start day. And last, run duration limit. Let's do one of these. And that's the whole thing updated. Now then you just return it. Updated equipment. Oh no! Now it tells me you've got a problem. The expression was expected to have type A option, but here has type string 200. Did I, did I, oh, maybe I made the type definition wrong. Yeah, I did. These should not be options. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> wow. Name details. Rate. Rate start of rate start start day and then and duration limit. No, still. To type two hundred option, but here I said string two hundred. Is this, this set? Uh, yeah, this this is an option. Wait, what does this, this expect? Or else returns option if it is sum, otherwise returns if none. The value to use if option is none. Oh, oh, it does not wait. Uh, it always returns an option. That's not what I want. Wait, wait, is that the, why would I want this? Is it if it, if it, I always want an option? Yeah, but I don't want to always want an option. Yeah, it says so right here. Uh, okay. So that's not what we what we want. Um I could just write this function myself. It's not very difficult to do. Oh, default value. That's what we want. It even says right, right yeah, I'm just pointing at my screen. Um, <laughs> even says so right here. You can barely see it, but it says default value, which is, uh, you can see where the, the return type is just a tick T, right? But up here uh, for or else, you see that it's a tick option. Should it should have been the, um, should have been the, but a hint. Gets the value of the option if the option is sum. Otherwise, returns the specified default value. And I'm guessing that with is just the same thing with a function. The dev thunk, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing with just a function. Default value. There we go. That's what we want. So let's just change all these to default value. Awesome sauce. Let's see. Is this the right color or is it? Possible incorrect information. This token is 
uh, wow, okay. Possible incorrect indentation. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, that makes more sense. If I just read it right, <laughs> it makes a lot more sense for some reason. Does that, does it, uh, well, we could just do this. There we go, all fixed. Yeah, I think this works. Uh, this, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. this should <clears throat> be an update, updated equipment, like so. Ah, uh, of course. Why is the ID just a GUID? Equal, wait, wait, what? Name, right, type. Why is the ID a GUID, not an equipment ID? That doesn't make any sense. That's strange. Okay, uh, but sure, we'll just do the validated equipment update.id, equipment ID, which is an equipment ID. Strange. Uh, why is this complaining? Unexpected start of, uh, every, does this fix it? Oh, uh, nope. Uh, does this fix it? Yep, for now. And if we just do this and then, whoa, whoa. A lot of this was not right. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, this will make it right. And we do this. Uh, oh, 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 right, right. No, 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 no. Uh, let's see. Uh, is it confused because of the, yeah, okay, that was that. There we go. Indentation makes a difference in F sharp. Keep that in mind. Now everything works as it should. Excellent. <laughs> So that's the optionally update equipment function, which updates the equipment uh, optionally based on whether or not it has a different value. Great. So now that we've optionally updated it, we need to basically just create the event, don't we? It's been updated, yeah. Yep. So, Let's do the event thingy. Uh, did we actually, did I actually define like a create event? I sh must have. Yeah, create events. There you go. Type, create events. It takes a updated equipment and it creates an equipment updated. Yeah, that's basically all it does. It does so over there too. Implementation. Let create create events it's of type create events. It is a function. It takes a updated equipment. And it basically just kind of converts it. Let uh, equip oh equipment updated of type equipment updated B Uh, equipment ID is equi um, updated equipment dot equipment. Oh crap! Uh, oh, not that one. ID. Yes. Just 
just a lot of this again, which is fine. It is a lot of typing um, in the beginning. Uh, there, there might be some ways of like streamlining this a bit uh, by um, introducing some functions and stuff. But at this point, I just want to get into the habit of, of typing F sharp, like getting into the a lot of a lot of my muscle memory depends on me writing a certain languages and certain syn syntaxes. Um, yeah, that did not work. <laughs> How about this way? Nope, nope. That just does a fixed thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it depend. My muscle memory is basically programmed for other languages. So I just want to get into the habit and and get the kind of muscle memory for writing f sharp uh, this include a lot of copying the, this time but yeah um, and getting used to it uh, and if not uh, it's a bit of typing now but later uh when coming back to this code it's uh, you could argue that it's going to be clearer that what it actually does there's less magic happening behind the scenes although I think uh, like a maybe a mapping function would have been nice. You could do something with reflection and stuff. I don't know. It kind of feels like it feels kind of uh, not in the spirit of F sharp, I guess. Uh, equip uh, whoop. equipment update. Return that one. This one complains. Uh, oh, it does not uh, include the ID. Oh, it just says ID. Yeah, I think I want to want this to be equipment ID, actually, like so. Why are you still complaining? Equipment updated. Equipment updated. Yeah. That's oh, probably just up oh, there. We go. Just slow. <laughs> just about to say. Okay. So the last one is the full implementation, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Um. So, uh, this is. The, oh, create. Uh, let this be update equipment. Equipment. Uh, it's going to take a lot of different stuff uh, later on. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yes, it does all of those things. Uh, so it and it should return a update equipment type, right? Takes a function, takes an unvalidated uh, equipment update. Un <laughs> unvalidated equipment update. Unvalidated. Make it no longer. Correct. And it takes that unvalidated equipment update. Like so. And it tries to validate it first. Validate the equipment update. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is internal. But this thing has some dependencies, which is valid equipment ID. So we need to pass that in here. Here, validate equipment ID. And we do that here. Validate equipment ID, like so. Uh, 
Then the next thing it does is that it needs to map the error, map error. And this should be a update equipment error. Missing reference? What? What? Wait, what? <laughs> Update equipment error, which can be a validation error. Yes. Okay, we're just going to move on for now and get, uh, come back to it if it doesn't match up later. It might, it might just resolve itself, which is nice. <clears throat> Uh, yes. So now we're inside of the result thingy-majig. And the next thing that we want to do is optionally update. Yeah. And um, the optionally update is not going to return in the errors. No. So this is just going to be a simple result map. And it's... Not going to be easy. Result map, and then we're going to do uh, optionally update the equipment. But this needs some dependencies of its own, so it needs load equipment. Equipment. Which we need to pass in here. Load equipment. Does it need anything else? No, that's what it needs. And uh, this also, do, 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 do. right, this needs to map the thing image egg. So we can do this, I'll make this a, oh, let's make this a function that validated equipment. Do this and put this validated equipment I result a map, then do let's map the error to a uh, update. Equipment there, like so. No, 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 that's the overall type, right? Oh. Uh, this is a validation error. This doesn't really do anything like this. So, I don't know, like this and this. Uh, wait, well, why am I doing this? I, I, I think I'm confusing. I'm, I think I'm confusing. Um, bind, the bind thing is the stuff I need to do with bind and the stuff I need to do with map. I think this should work. No, 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 no. Right. This one. This one should be validation of validation error. Right. Which means that this does this. Yeah. Yep. 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 yep, yep. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, this doesn't return anything. Uh, yep. So. This last step is create events. And that's not how you write it when you want the function. Oh. Looks like the type name is wrong. No, not internal types. Uh, public types. Nope. 
Internal types, indeed. Create events, yes. Yes. I don't know. Yes, and this also needs to be a result dot map because it doesn't produce any errors. Like so, this complains. The expression was expected to have type result validated equipment update. Update equipment error. Yes. But here has type result B to C. And then it says the expression was expected to have type result validate equipment update update equipment error to take A. But here is type result. Oh, there's a function in there. Result and then a validate equipment update. Right. Uh, right, because this needs to be. Mm -hmm. This is where we need it. Okay, 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 okay. I knew there was something, but I, but I did, uh, but I did it wrong still. Fun. Uh, va uh, what, what, what have we got here? Validated equipment. Uh, validated equipment. Nope. Uh, let's see. Ah, it's missing a D in here. Her, her, her. And then we do a result. Ooh. What do we got here? Uh, yeah, we don't need the result map in here. We want it here. Result the map. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. This is what we want. We use that as a mapping function and then we pass it in there. Yeah. Does the return function, so that is, that's fine. Then we do result. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then we've got the update equipment returned from that one. Yeah. Excellent. Huzzah! We are done. That's basically it. Took a while. Almost two hours, which is <laughs> basically what it takes for every one of these um, features to be done. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is what we want. Yeah. Let's see. We just... Uh, let me just add these to the repo. Add uh, up. To, uh, how do we word these earlier? Yeah. Nope. Add update equipment. There we go. So the thing that's not working as it should yet in none in the in none of the updated uh, in implemented workflows is uh, the result unwrapping. So right now it fails if invalid, which is not ideal. Uh, there is a chapter in the book that kind of goes through the um, the process of how to create. Um, uh, the process of how to create functions that validate input that returns multiple uh, multiple errors if there are multiple validation errors, which is what we want. But I haven't read that chapter properly yet or since last year. So that's on the to-do list. But um, yeah, that's it for now. 
I and also see the Twitch stream is down again. This is oh, terribly annoying. Okay. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and um, especially if you watched all the way through, thank you for keeping or, or staying with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll um, hopefully return a bit sooner next time. But yeah, that's it for now. So um, I hope to see you next time. Snuckies.